Uh, life sciences are uh, common tests. Uh, so we are going to look at the common tests from a KwaZulu Natal province. So um, in terms of the structures and information, uh, the first part uh, you have to answer all questions. So take note that we are going to answer all questions. Uh, so take note uh, not to leave any question unanswered. So we go to the first uh, part of our question. Of course, uh, this is our first section, uh, which is section A. Uh, and uh, according to the uh, first question that we have, it says end endemic organisms. Uh, so the correct response uh, that we have is that uh, they are found in a particular uh, country and nowhere else. So uh, we have a B as the, uh, as the correct response. And then we we'll go to um, number two. Uh, the aloe grows on a north facing slope in the southern hemisphere where it is uh where it is warm and dry. So we have uh A uh, as the correct answer. Then number three, uh study the characteristics of different kingdoms below. Uh so we can go through uh, the characteristics and then uh, the question says uh, which one of the following combinations are characteristics of kingdom uh planting. So of course uh with the responses uh, that we have, you see that D is the correct one, uh, which is two and four. So uh, we are saying uh, two and uh, and four. So we are having that uh, on. Uh, we are having that on on uh, on on D. So D becomes uh, the correct. So we are saying I have cells uh, with cells and I have chlorophyll. So that's what we have as a characteristics of our different uh, kingdoms. So um, so uh, we go to uh, the next question that we have, uh, that is now going to be our question uh, four. Uh, so in terms of our question four, which one of the following is the correct way of writing the scientific name for our modern humans? So uh, we can try to uh, zoom out. Of course, uh, the correct uh, response uh, that we have our uh, number four is a uh, homo sapiens, which we are having on, uh, which we are having on A. So A is uh, the correct answer that we have. So number five, uh, which one of the following correctly describes kingdom a uh, pro uh, protista? So of course, uh, with uh, the responses uh, that we have, uh, we have got C as the uh, correct answer. So uh, this is what we have uh, in terms of our section A. It was section A is a total of 10 marks. So we move on to uh, this question two, which is on section, uh, which is on section B. So in terms of the first question, uh, the diagram below represents a food web. So the first question says, define a food web. So a food web basically is a, it's a number of interacting uh, food chains. So uh, in terms of description, we are saying a number. Of interacting food chains. So this is the description of a food web. Uh, so we have uh, that uh, basic description uh, in our other section of a food web by saying uh, on this part, there's a number of interacting uh, food uh, chains. So that's what we have. So um, moving on to the next question that we have is now 2.1.2. Why is uh, the seaweed regarded as a producer in this uh, food web? So we have got the seaweed here. And why is it uh, regarded uh, as a uh, as a producer? It's because obviously uh, it produces uh, its own food. Uh, it produces its own food uh, rather than uh, others, uh, which are depending uh, on, um, on 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 the other food. So that's uh, basically uh, the reason why uh, the seaweed is regarded as a producer. So we have also that description is uh, you know other section two point one point two. It is um, autotroph autotrophic uh, or can produce its own food. So this is uh, the response that we have on that part. Then we go to uh, the next question. Uh, on the next question, it reads, uh, from the food web, name one secondary consumer, name we have before, name secondary, uh, 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 secondary carnivore. So uh, in terms of uh, secondary consumer, 
uh, we can go there and check how which one is at the secondary consumer. So in terms of the second secondary consumer, you can see that we can have them uh, at this stage, uh, whereby we've got the octopus. Uh, we also have uh, the crab, uh, or we can also have the starfish. So that's where we have got secondary, uh, secondary consumer. So uh, those are the ones that we have as secondary consumers. Then um, in terms of the second part, uh, we are supposed to identify the herbivore. Uh, so herbivore obviously uh, they uh, they they consume uh, the uh, the vegetation. We have got uh, the uh, limpets, and then we have also have got the periwinkles so as the uh, uh, herbivores. So uh, that's what we have on this part as herbivores. So uh, this one represents our our B. On this part, and then uh, we have got our A uh, being represented on this part because our A is the second that consumer. Then we go to uh, the next one is second. Uh, uh, the next one is second that carnivore. So uh, second that carnivore becomes the last uh, part that we have where we have our our seal, uh, and then also we have uh, this is also as our uh, second that carnivore. So this now is representing our seal. In this part, so basically that's what we have, and we have are those uh, answers is also summarized in our answer section, as we are saying our A, our B, and our C. So basically that's uh, what we have for that part. Then we move on to uh, the next question that we have, which is now uh, two point one point four. Uh, 2.1.4 says a name to a uh, decomposers are normally present in any ecosystem. Uh, name to decomposers normally are present in any ecosystem. Uh, so you'd see that uh, on that part, uh, you can uh, include bacteria. Uh, bacteria is uh, one of them. So we have them also as uh, in, listed in our other section where we've got the fungi and then we've got also the bacteria. Uh, the fungi and then bacteria is a part of that. Then uh, we move on to the next part, uh, whereby we go to 2.1.5, construct a food chain from the food web that contains four trophic levels and it includes uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the periwinkles. So uh, it has to be uh, four. It has to yes uh, to have four trophic levels. So uh, of course you can construct a, a food web whereby uh, you have got the seaweed, and then from the seaweed it goes to the uh, peri, uh, periwinkles. So uh, we can see that uh, from the direction that we have, we have got sea, uh, seaweed, periwinkles, and then we have got the crab. Uh, then from the crab, we've got the sea, uh, seagull. This is what this part. So this can be a food web that you can come up with. So, uh, in terms of that, we also I uh, have that is summarized in another section whereby uh, we have the seaweed on well, this part, and then it goes to the periwinkles, and then it goes to uh, the octopus, and then we've got the seal, that last part. And or alternatively, you can come up with an alternative uh, food uh, web as indicated. So uh, this is uh, what we have on that part. Then we move on to the next question. Assuming that the food chain you drew in question 2.1.5 is the only one that existed in an ecosystem, describe what would happen if all the periwinkles died. So uh, what do you think will happen uh, if all the uh, periwinkles are died? Uh, so if the, uh, all, if the periwinkles uh, dies, uh, so we are going to have a, a, a larger population of the seaweed because the periwinkles are... are are depending on the uh, on the seaweed. So if uh, if, if uh, the periwinkles dies, it means uh, this one population of this one will increase. Uh, we are going to see an increase, and then uh, we are also going to see a decrease in octopus because octopus is also uh, eating the uh, periwinkles. So a decrease on octopus, but an increase in seaweed. So that's exactly how we can come up with that explanation. So. Uh, this is exactly as uh, articulated in the answer section on this part. 
uh, an increase uh, in the assumed population and then a decrease in, in the current population. And then also you can explain this in the point of view of a decrease in the uh, single uh, population. So uh, this, these are the alternative explanations uh, that we have for that part, which is uh, that part that we have. Then moving on to the next question, which is now going to be uh, 2.1.7, consider the energy flow shown uh, in the food chain below. Uh, of course, uh, this is uh, the energy flow. And then they say calculate the percentage of energy that is passed on from limpets uh, to the starfish. So we see that uh, from the limpets uh, to the uh, starfish. So this is the part that we have. So uh, on our calculation, uh, we are going to say the 600 of the starfish. Uh, over the uh, 7,000 of limpets. Uh, and then you multiply by 100. So we calculate it like that. Uh, you are going to leave it as a percentage, which is going to be 8.57. And of course, uh, if you uh, round it off uh, to the nearest whole number, it becomes 9%. It becomes 9%. So this is uh, what we have on that part. So uh, moving on to uh, the next question, it's now question three. Uh, it reads, the graph below shows the results of an investigation carried out to determine the water holding capacity of different soil samples. Uh, so this is what we have. And then uh, for this investigation, identify the dependent variable. So which one is uh, the uh, dependent uh, variable? Uh, it means its values are, are depending on another uh, or another factor. So in that case, uh, we see that uh, the uh, the water holding capacity is, is the dependent. Uh, is, uh, it depends on the uh, soil samples. So to, for you, for you to uh, determine the water holding capacity, it would depend on the soil samples. You understand? So in that case, uh, it becomes a, a dependent a variable. So we are saying we have uh, the water holding capacity on this part. water holding capacity. Then in terms of independent variable now, its soil samples are not uh, depending on anything. So we have soil samples as uh, independent. So soil samples are becomes independent uh, variable. So this is what we have then. Our next question, what is the water holding capacity of silt loom? Uh, we come to silt loom, we see that we have a silt loom on this part. And uh, if you go up, uh, you'd see that uh, we have uh, at this point, that's where we have got suit loom. So if you go straight this side, you see that it is 25 on this point. 25 uh, milliliters is indicated uh, by the vertical axis description. What about the capacity in milliliters? So we've got 25 milliliters. So basically, that's what we have. So we are saying uh, on this part, we have got 25. Milliliters. Then our next question, which soil type is lowest water holding capacity? So we can easily uh, detect uh, there which one is got low, lowest, which is coarse sand, which is it's got the lowest bar. So coarse sand on that part. There are 32 ways in which the reliability of the investigation can be increased. So uh, Obviously, to uh, for, for the reliability to be increased, uh, the, the investigation has to be repeated. One, uh, to have more than one set of each soil sample also can be another uh, another factor to make it uh, reliable. So this is now 3.1.4. So uh, we can uh, try to see uh, what we have in terms of our response to uh, 3.1.4. So repeat uh, the investigation and have more than uh, one set uh, one set up of each soil sample. So this is uh, the explanation that we have in terms of that one. Then we uh, move on to the next question, uh, which reads uh, 3.1.5, 3 explain the consequence to plant roots 
if the soil become waterlogged. So what would be the uh, consequence to uh, to plant roots? So uh, there will be no oxygen available for respiration. One, uh, there will uh, there will be no air. So basically, those are typical uh, responses that we can give uh, in th terms of that. Uh, we have got no air, uh, no oxygen available for respiration, and then leading to uh, leading to rotting or death of plant roots. So uh, those are the consequences. Uh, they will move on to. Identify two factors that should be kept constant in the investigation. So uh, equal amount of water in each soil type uh, is another factor. Uh, same amount of soil, soil type, again, another factor that can be uh, maintained constant. Uh, so these are the points that we have on that part. Then um, moving on to uh, the next question. Uh, set two advantages of ecotourism. Uh, what are advantage of ecotourism? Clear uh, employment, one, improve the economy, uh, new business opportunities also uh, the, uh, are the points that we can raise in, in terms of that. So we have uh, those points as I mentioned, you know, under section. And then uh, we move on to the next uh, part of our question. Uh, of course, uh, this is the end of our section B. Of course, we have got our section C. Uh, we have got question four, describe the nitrogen cycle and the carbon cycle. So uh, pertaining to uh, that uh, nitrogen cycle. So these are the points on nitrogen cycle. So on this part, uh, we are saying nitrogen are fixing bacteria and uh, lightning. And we also have convert, uh, convert N2 into uh, nitrates. Uh, the nitrates absorbed by plants and are used, are used to make plant uh, proteins. So... Uh, typically, these are the points that you are supposed to come up with. In terms of the nitrogen cycle, then we also have the carbon cycle that we need that. So we also have points uh, explaining a carbon cycle. So on the carbon cycle, uh, we are saying a carbon dioxide produced uh, during respiration is released into the atmosphere, uh, which is used by plants uh, for photosynthesis, uh, used to produce organic compounds. Uh, excess organic compounds are stored uh, in the plant body. So that's uh, what we have on uh, the carbon cycle. Of course, we've got further points that are also there. Then uh, uh, this uh, becomes uh, the uh, last part that we have in terms of our question paper so uh, thank you for listening and hopefully the video was helpful and let's not forget to subscribe and share to our channel and share the link to our colleagues who are doing great life science as for this video i'm out